So I've been thinking lately about the ideas of interconnectedness and, and unity, and um, I realized that this has actually become kind of a cliche in modern philosophy, that it's like every philosopher or intellectual is, it, you know, you know, pounds their fist insisting that everything is interconnected and uh, you know, that we need to get away from this illusion, this persistent illusion that, uh, that everything is separate and, and disconnected and, and soon apart. And uh, so consistent, do we, so consistently do we hear this that you almost wonder who they're arguing with. Um, you know, and basically, they seem to be arguing with some long dead Cartesians or Aristotelians who you know, were, were ignorant of systems theory and uh, and things like that. Um, and I actually recently you know, kind, of, kind of realized actually the importance of importance of realizing some of the disconnectedness of reality. Um, I was listening to a Graham Harmon lecture recently titled "Everything Is Not Connected," um, and you know he was arguing against this, this very idea and been pointing out actually this the sense in which reality is not connected together. Um, obviously, his, in his object-oriented ontology, of course, he talks about how objects recede from uh, from their relations, that every object is more than its relations. And so uh, there is a fundamentally a relational aspect to uh, to reality. Of course, the relations themselves are also objects, so they recede from other relations as well. So there's, you know, kind of a um, infinite regress in that, um, which I'm actually fine with the infinite regresses, but um, so, but you know the idea is the objects recede from their relations, so they so they have a an a relational aspect, and uh, to the extent that connections are made in in Harmon's ontology, they, there's vicarious causation, which means that objects c come together to form a new object, and it's within the new object that they affect they affect each other. So, uh, but anyway, uh, the idea is that connections actually need to be made; they are they don't simply exist a priori. So I mean, systems and networks exist. But their membership is finite. Yeah, they, a, a system is made up of specific, different, um, you know, different uh, objects um, together in relations. But though that system has to be, has to be created and isn't just, uh, it, it doesn't simply include everything being perfectly interconnected. There, there are in, in, in things that are also strong connections and weak connections too. I mean, and that's like William James talked about in, in the pluralistic universe, he talked about you know, the different conjunctions with and not, uh, you know, there, there's, there, there are con conjunctions and disjunctions uh, that, that all you kind know, of work together in reality. Uh, and, and so things are only vicarious really, they're, they're connected through an intermediary. Um, so we don't live in this perfectly integrated world. That there, there actually is a great deal of um, separation, and uh, and and differentiation and disconnection, uh, and um, there's actually an important political dimension to this because if everything is perfectly interconnected, then uh, it's hard to see how things like class conflict and patriarchy and white supremacy could exist. Um, you know, they, they involve privilege, which involves a disconnect, I and mean, that's to, to be. In the privileged class is to uh, not see beyond your privilege. It means that uh, it means you are, in a in a great sense, disconnected from the from those who aren't privileged. You know, and oppression is, is you know involves these kind of fractures and divisions. They, things are strewn apart from each other, um, and who are disconnected from say the mean, say their own labor from from the means of production. Uh, from equal rights, from justice, so yeah, everything is torn apart. Um, and creation itself, even the even the the, the sort of universal crea creation that goes on, as there's actually greater differentiation over time. That there's that there's differentiated into galaxies and solar systems, and planets and stuff. I mean, uh, the the universe will never be as unified at a, as it was at the big at the moment of the Big Bang. Um, so one might actually talk about a hope for interconnectedness, and I think this is actually interesting if, if you look at Eastern versus Western religions. Um, Eastern religion tends to emphasize this underlying oneness of all things, which can very, very much goes with the kind of like interconnectedness idea, although actually there's a, a difference between oneness or non-duality and, intercon and interconnectedness that I think needs to be explored more deeply. Um, but Western religion uh, to the contrary, actually emphasizes the fallenness 
of the world. It emphasizes the, the, the fractures and disjunctions and the separations that exist in reality. And it uh, holds out the hope for a future integration of, of, of all creation. And uh, as part of its eschatology, which um, the term eschatology gets kind of confused. People associate with the end of the world when what it really means is the end of evil, the end of separation and exile. That could, I mean, particularly the Jewish religion in particular tends to be pretty much uh, talking about exile as its central theme. And you know, for Christians, it's more sin and fallenness. But um, you know, in, in Judaism, there's this concept called, concept called tikkun olam, meaning mending of the world. The idea is that yes, the world is fractured, and it is our, our great work in this reality to help mend it together and bring together, bring back together this integration. So, in a sense, I, I want to kind of integrate the these two the the Eastern and Western ideas about interconnection, um, and I want to first of all take the disjunctions and fractures and separations of, in reality very seriously, because I think that uh, there is a very real disconnect. Uh, I mean, their differentiation is, I think, not problematic in itself, but um, there are real fractures and, um, and and separations and disjunctions that, that are very harmful, like, like the, the ones related to oppression and privilege that I mentioned. Um, yeah, and so I want to take those separations seriously, but I also want uh, to suggest that there is also a kind of unifying principle underlying this differentiation, um, and so that the Eastern mystics are also right. Um, and I, th I think well, we we can find it in this in, in this principle of creativity. See, um, I, I've actually been reading Ian Hamilton Grant's um, Philosophies of Nature after Schelling, and I haven't finished yet, but at one point he talks about you know the unthinged, the, 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 the fundamental creative process. And so the idea is that the products of nature are separate and and, uh, and have disjunctions. Dis 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 they are the objects of Graham Harmon's object oriented ontology. Uh, but where the unity lies is, in, is not in the products, but in the productivity of nature. There's this kind of flow of creative transformation that brings about this very, this the very differentiation that is involved in the universal creativity, um, and that flow is, or you know, what Bergson called uh, duration, is this kind of ever-present reality that can be accessed at any time. So that's why you know, the mystics can uh, can achieve this realization of the sort of this under, underlying unity. Um, but it's also an ideal towards which we're drawing a kind of a kind of platonic idea that uh, you know that becomes the sort of beckoning point that it, that it is the good, the beautiful, and the true. Um, and so uh, through that, I mean, we never we we can never go back to that primordial unity that we had at the Big Bang. But what we can achieve instead is a greater integration. And that's what I was saying. Like there's a difference between. Um, you know, integration or interconnectedness versus you know um, unity or non-duality. So um, so that's that's this that's what we are called to do is help facilitate a greater um, interconnectedness, a greater you know a greater mutual um, harmony between uh, the different objects of, of the world. Um, and and sometimes that actually involves some uh, destructive aspects. It means uh, there has to be some creative destruction where where we dismantle uh, these very integrated systems that are systems of oppression because they block the greater level of harmonious in, um, integration that uh, that we're striving for. So so even so even destruction can be a creative process, um, and so. And so, so the, the idea is, is that with the, this fundamental creative process is, is bo simultaneously both a present reality and uh, that which calls us to um, uh, to our higher nature. So uh, I guess that's it for now. Peace.